Here are 15 most anticipated JRPG bound to be released in 2024. This list won't only showcase Japanese video games, I decided to expand it to Southeast Asia in general because there are a lot of titles worth considering. So without further ado, let's get cracking. So the first game on this list is DK Police. Japanese game developer Level 5 is making a comeback this year with its new crime suspense RPG, DK Police, described as an intriguing detective title with turn-based RPG elements. Set in Decazum, a virtual replica of the real world, players gather clues to solve mysteries. The game, showcased on the PS5, boasts stunning anime-like visuals, offering a free exploration of maps. Clues are collected by interrogating and interacting, then organized on a deduction board to make connections. Upon finding the culprit, the game transitions into a turn-based RPG battle system, where strategic use of action points is crucial. The game shows Chromus with its exquisite art style, making it an exciting comeback title for level 5. The anticipation is high to fully experience this anime detective adventure. Dicapolis is slated for an official release in 2024, although a specific date is yet to be confirmed. Next is Megaton Musashi Wired, also developed by Level 5. Megaton Musashi Wired will feature online multiplayer and the prospect of having epic battles controlling mechas really excites me. The game will offer cross-play, cross-save and worldwide cooperative and competitive online play. As a fan of anime franchises like Mobile Suit, it's no-brainer that I like mecha games. I used to only content myself with Mobile Suit video games, but I noticed there are a lot more titles that deserve our attention. That's why I'll give this game a try when it will come out, and I'm sure the multiplayer mode can add a touch of competitivity in this game. It will be released on April 25th, 2024 for Nintendo Switch, PS5, PS4 and PC. The next game on this list is Persona 3 Reload. Persona 3 Reload, a remake of Persona 3 using Unreal Engine, will recreate the original Persona 3 experience with newly recorded voices, new scenes, events, and both new and arranged music. The remake aims to update the game to modern standards, aligning with the advancement made in Persona 5, featuring improved graphics, updated systems, voice lines in Japanese and English, and text available in 14 languages. It will not include content from the FES and portable versions according to producer Ryota Nitsuma. I have quite a personal story with the Persona franchise. Having started with Persona 4 Golden on the PS Vita, I almost always get absorbed into its universe through its unique environments and iconic music. Persona 3 Reload is set to release in early 2024 for various platforms including PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series and Windows with Game Pass availability at launch. Next is Metaphor Fantasio, the fantasy RPG set in the diverse United Kingdom of Ryokronia, where the protagonist from the Elder Tribe embarks on a journey to lift a curse. Developed by Studio Zero, creators of the great game Catherine the Full Body and featuring the creative minds behind the Persona series, the game explores the themes of anxiety, magic and overcoming fear. The narrative involves a political intrigue, alliances with distinct tribes, and a quest for the throne. The flagship Persona art style has been repurposed for the lead art direction of this game, and it really looks incredible. Studio Zero really added their own know-how to the game's graphics, and it just looks awesome. I have quite big expectations for this story. As Previous games from both the studio and Persona games are known for having profound world building and captivating stories. On an additional note, I wanted to mention the famous smooth and dynamic Persona UI that I expect to find in this game as well. Anticipated in fall 2024, the game aims to deliver captivating world building and the signature Persona art style. Really looking forward to this game. Okay, next up is Blue Protocol. Amazon Game Studios oversees the western release of Blue Protocol, one of the MMO RPG built as a direct competitor to other games like Genshin Impact. Amazon aims for approachability and customization for a global audience, drawing on past experiences with titles like New World. Blue Protocol offers a team-based dungeon exploration, boss battles for 6 players, diverse character classes, and player flexibility in mixing worlds. The game is free to play with founder packs, a season pass, and a gacha model, sparking a concern about potential impacts on player progress and game balance. Regarding the graphics, I don't have any particular things to say about it, aside from the fact that it looks very similar to Genshin Impact and to our fantasy. Nonetheless, I'm looking forward to what the game can bring to the table in terms of playability and gameplay mechanics. I hope it will set it apart from its competitors in this niche of the game industry. It will be released on PS5 and Xbox Series in 2024. 
next is Zenless Zone Zero. However, some plans to launch their next heavy hitter, Zenless Zone Zero, in 2024, featuring a unique gameplay, a gacha system for characters, which is pervasive in games of this kind, and a vibrant post apocalyptic setting in New Eridu. The combat system emphasizes timing and combos, with 12 agents and 5 factions at your disposal, adding a diversity. Set in the 90s and 2000s era, the narrative follows the protagonist Bell and Wise in the aftermath of the supernatural hollows with distinctive character design, accessible combat and multiplayer in development. I really love the art style of this game. It has an urban touch to it that I feel really entrancing. We can also recognize Hoyoverse behind this game, as the gameplay mechanics kinda look similar to what we've been fed those last years, particularly Honkai Impact with its closed areas and boss fightings, and as proved with their previous games, we can expect a highly elaborated game. This is among the major releases I'm waiting for this year. You can expect to play the game on PC, Android and iOS. The next big game on this list is Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. It is a highly anticipated fantasy RPG. Living on a little known island in a remote part of the skies, you find a letter left behind by your father telling you to set off for a legendary island. However, before you leave, you meet a mysterious girl named Lyria inevitably setting the wheels of fate in motion, offering a preview of the main story and online multiplayer quest with 11 playable characters. A demo for Grand Blue Fantasy Relink is set to release in January. Rewards from the demo can be transferred to the full game. The demo includes tutorial, story and quest modes for an immersive experience. The game looks really good, animations are smooth, and the environments are detailed. I don't think we'll be disappointed, whether it be the story of the gameplay in and of itself. Stay tuned for the showcase on January 11th, where more details potentially about upcoming GLC will be revealed by Psy Games. The game will be released on February 1st, 2024 on PS4, PS5 and PC. Next is Ayudan Chronicles 100 Heroes. Ayudan Chronicles 100 Heroes had a successful Kickstarter, becoming the fourth most funded game in August 2020. It raised $1 million and achieved its goals swiftly. The project marks a collaboration between Suikoden creators Yoshitaka Murayama and Junko Kawano. After 25 years, the game is set in the diverse continent of Aruan and follows the story of Imperial Officer Sei Kensling and village boy Noah amid wars and alliances. The previous game of the franchise, called Ayudan Chronicles Rise, offers a pre-war stories of characters who will later become companions in 100 Heroes. You'll get perks for players linking it with 100 Heroes. The game boasts over a whopping count of 100 voice actors for its English and Japanese cast. I really like how the developers manage to blend modernity and vintage through 3D environments and pixel art sprites. I feel like this trend got set into motion with Octopath Traveler and I can't get enough of it. It looks so good, to be honest. Ayudan Chronicle 100 Heroes is set to release on April 23rd, 2024 for Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Xbox Series, and PC. And that is a perfect segue for Sukoden Remasters. Konami surprised everyone at the Tokyo Game Show by announcing remasters of the two first games back in 2022. The Sukoden series, dating back to 1995, holds a cult classic status, and the remasters aim to enhance the beloved titles for a modern audience. The success of the crowdfunded Ayuden Chronicle 100 Heroes may have motivated Konami to revisit this series. Despite not being developed by the original developers, the remasters feature the return of the original original character artist Junko Kawano. The remasters promise graphical, mechanical and quality of life improvements, including a dialogue log, auto battle and double speed battles. For my part, I haven't played any game from the Sukoden series so far, but I plan on trying the first games to get acquainted with the franchise in order to be minimally prepared before going into the modern remakes, and it will enable me to see the links between Sukoden and Ayudan Chronicles games and figure out how they interlink together. Konami delayed the release of the Sukoden 1 and to HD remaster originally set for 2023 on PS4, Xbox One, Switch and PC via Steam to 2024. Next is Visions of Mana. Square Enix is set to release a new entry in the Mana series titled Visions of Mana, marking the first mainline installment in over 15 years. Players will assume the role of Fall, embarking on a fateful journey to the Tree of Mana in a semi-open field world. The game maintains the series' emphasis on nature and elemental aspects of Mana, with real-time, fast-paced and strategically deep party-based combat. Visions of Mana is developed by key figures from previous Mana games, 
including producer Masaru Oyamada and renowned sound composers, having played the Trials of Mana on PS4 back in 2020. I'm really waiting for this one. I liked the remixes and their modern spin on it, and the colorful aspect of the Mana series really appeals to me. The action RPG scheduled for a 2024 release on PlayStation consoles, Xbox series, and PC. Let's diversify the list with Stellar Blade. Korean developer Shift Up's action adventure game Stellar Blade, featuring a hack and slash gameplay style with a protagonist named Eve, combating the inhibitors forces in a post apocalyptic Earth. The game's aesthetic draws inspiration from titles like Devil May Cry and Bayonetta, with elements resembling Souls like games such as Code Vein. Stellar Blade is expected to take full advantage of the PS5 dual sense controllers and graphical capabilities. The plot follows Eve in a world devastated by a global invasion with humanity forced to escape to an outer space colony. Shift Up, known for the mobile gacha game Destiny Child, comprises team members who worked on games like Magna Carta. The game will definitely complement the set of releases planned for this year, with its more dynamic gameplay and unconventional environments and car designs. I don't have a PS5, unfortunately, but I'll be waiting around the corner for an eventual PC release. Initially scheduled for release in 2023, it has been pushed to a 2024 release window. The game originally known as Project Eve is for now a PS5 exclusive. Next is Showa American Story, developed by Chinese developer Neckcom Games. The game envisions an alternate history where Japan becomes an economic superpower, turning the United States into a de facto unofficial Japanese colony. The narrative follows Choko Chigusa, a 19 year old stunt woman on a revenge quest in a reimagined America filled with zombies, monsters, and warring criminal underworlds. Showa American Story is described as a love letter to 80s pop culture, featuring a mix of American and Japanese influences with a gameplay resembling a sandbox action-adventure title. The creative director XY Luo emphasizes that the game draws inspiration from popular Japanese manga such as Dragon Ball, Mobile Suit Gundam, Senseiya and other Japanese culture elements, but offers a unique Chinese perspective on the Showa era. Personally, I'm looking for more realistic RPGs like those in the Asian video game industry and I'm glad to see more instances like this being produced for a global audience. Showa American Story is set to be released on PS4, PS4, PS5 and PC. Next is Horizon Force. Yo Yuan has announced Horizon Force, Vonimir, an upcoming action RPG which features high definition pixel art combining engaging RPG adventure storytelling with a stylish action combat set in a magnificent Middle Earth world. Players can explore, recruit teammates, collect and develop businesses, challenge enemies, and uncover the world's secrets. Key features include a vast and distinctive landscape, smooth action strategy, combat with rich skill modules, over 8 unique weapon modules, teammate rescue and recruitment, and various activities like forging and trade. It looks visually similar to Octopath Traveler, and I'm really excited about its release. It's set to release on Nintendo Switch, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series, and PC. Next is Saga Emerald, developed by Square Enix. Pre-orders are open for the standard version, and a collector's edition has been announced. The RPG combines classic and new elements with 17 interconnected worlds and 6 unique characters. The strategic timeline battle system returns, providing a familiar yet fresh experience. Pre-order bonuses include weapon and armor enhancement materials. I really like the character designs of this game. It's kinda reminiscent of Final Fantasy's semi-realistic faces. Square Enix announced the release date of Saga Emerald Beyond on April 25th, 2024 for Nintendo Switch, PS5, PS4, Steam iOS and Android. One of the biggest releases of this list, if not the biggest release, is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is the highly anticipated addition to the Final Fantasy VII Remake project. It offers a new story across multiple regions, introducing new characters and locations with unique abilities and introduces synergy, attacks and skills that weren't available in the original PS1 game. World Intel involves exploring regions as in the original game. Customization includes Choco Boutiques for Chocobo equipment. The good thing about this sequel is that you don't have to have played the first game before entering this one as it is presented as a standalone game. If you ever make up your mind on playing Final Fantasy VII before Rebirth, Square Enix will put a bundle comprising both games on the market on its release. For my part, I played it on the PS4, but I play Rebirth on PC if it ever gets a port. If the game pans out well, Square Enix undoubtedly will optimize it for PC setups. It will be launched on the PS5 on February 29th, 2024. Let's wait and see how this game will progress. 
Next is Lost Soul Aside, announced during the China Joy 2023 event featuring RTX for enhanced visuals. Lost Soul Aside centers around the adventure of Kaiser and his dragon companion, Arena, with a unique teacher-student dynamic. The game draws inspiration from titles like Devil May Cry and Ninja Gaiden, offering action-focused gameplay with RPG elements. The China Hero Project aims to bring titles like Lost Soul Aside to the Western audience. I think the fact I'm a Final Fantasy fan helps toward taking a liking to this game. The car designs and graphics share similarities and it looks encouraging. It's scheduled for an early 2024 release on PlayStation 5 and PC. And the final game on this list is Unicorn Overlord. Atlas and Vanilla Wear's upcoming game, Unicorn Overlord, features a medieval fantasy setting with an anime style set in the continent of Fevrif, now controlled by the Dinoiran Empire. Players can explore 5 nations and 6 characters have been revealed so far, with a total of 60 unique characters planned. The game allows free exploration of the overworld, encountering quests such as battling enemies, liberating and rebuilding settlements, and preparing forces. The game, developed by the team behind 13 Sentinels, I guess Rim, promises a modern take on classic simulation RPGs. A collector's edition will be available and priced at $120. The medieval theme isn't usually my first choice when I pick a game and I'm not really into tactical RPG but the 2D battle phases look intriguing and the art style is quite unique so I may be tempted on this one. The release is scheduled for March 8th on Switch, PlayStation consoles and Xbox series. Did any game in this list pick your interest? Please let me know in the comment section down below. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. If you're into visual novels, I made a video about the best visual novels of 2023 you can play now. Thank you for watching and see you next time.